Hey guys, Brian Beeler coming to you again from the Storage View Lab. This time we're working on a project migrating a small Synology to a larger Synology. And this project in particular is a little personal to me and a little bit selfish. This is my DS712 Plus that's lived in the basement dutifully for the last seven or eight years. It's been my primary target for photos, tax documents, all those types of file-based storage needs that, that most users have. Now, it's not actually an issue of outgrowing it uh, so much. There are six terabytes of drives in here, really three available in a RAID 1 group. Uh, but it's really more about modernization. So this guy has an older Atom processor, uh, only a gig of RAM. And uh, it's funny, when you look at the spec sheet, it says it only supports up to six terabytes of hard drives because back when I put this thing to work, that's all that was available, the three terabyte drives. So we're going to modernize by going to this guy, the DS918+. Plus. Now the 918 Plus brings in a quad-core processor. It brings in four gig of RAM native with support of up to eight and uh, also offers NVMe pay bays at the bottom for uh, caching. So what we're going to do is start out by removing the two drives that are in here. Now these are WD Greens. Again, nothing wrong with them exactly. They weren't intended for NAS duty though. So we are going to go to WD Reds that are four terabytes. So I'm moving from three usable to eight usable and uh, you know, we'll be ready to go. The performance gain too isn't been, hasn't really been a problem for me, but as you think about more people in the household using it as my kids get a little bit older uh, and they're adding to their digital libraries and photos and videos and all that sort of thing, having something that's uh, more scalable and more performant as more users come on board is going to be helpful. We're also distributing content to more and more devices, whether it's smart TVs or other things around the house. So, as much as we've talked about how we love the, the tool list trays that uh, most NAS vendors have to offer, sadly the uh, 712 Plus uses the screws, but we get to quickly transition to Synology's clip-in trays, which makes this process a lot easier. So in terms of process, what we're going to do is get um, these guys in, and when we boot the Synology, it's going to find those existing drives and, and come right back online with them. I'm also going to put in two of the four terabyte WD Reds, because what that'll do is let us set up another RAID 1 volume, transition over all the existing files from the greens to the reds, and then we'll end by adding the other two reds, removing the two greens, and then reworking the, uh, the shares and, and volumes so that we're ready to go with a more complete RAID 6 story. And we'll have migrated over all the data without having to do much in terms of changing settings or, or doing much work on the Synology side. Now the Synology is great, as most people know, because of their DSM and uh, the, all the apps and flexibility that it offers is really arguably the best overall package for these types of NAS devices, small office, uh, home use, that sort of thing. So we're going to get those guys loaded in. Let me get two of these uh, four terabyte reds loaded in. And then what we'll do is fire up uh, Synology's finder tool, get the IP address of the new system, and we'll log in and do some of that work I was talking about. Now because this is storage review, you'll notice that there's, there are two M.2 SSDs sitting on the tray. Those are going to go in the bottom of this unit, and we're going to use them for caching, not because we need to, but because we can. And that's the important thing when you have a lab full of all sorts of extra gear. These are uh, Toshiba, now Kyoxia uh, SSDs, and they'll be perfect for this task. So we've got our last drive in. We'll gently flip them over. And again, this is a really nice piece of uh, engineering from Synology. These little doors open, pop off really easily. They're ventilated to make sure the drives stay cool. And all you have to do is let me turn it so I can see a little better, is gently slide them into the adapter and then there's a little plastic clip that just sort of wiggles 
and it'll pin the drive into place. And taking them out is just as easy. Easy, you just release the clip and, and off you go. So we'll put those doors back in. Get them upright, grab the power supply, and we're gonna get them plugged in and online and we'll move over to the DSM interface to continue this project. All right, so we've powered up the NAS and I've gone over to my desk to pull up the Synology Finder, find.synology.com. It does a quick scan of the network. And here we have our DS918 Plus with a status of migratable, which is a good first sign. We have another NAS on the uh, network, this uh, 1517 Plus. The status here is ready, um, which just means it's ready and available, but migratable is, uh, is the right indicator for what we're trying to do. We'll connect, agree to the EULA, and carry on. It'll do a quick scan to see what sort of information it can pull off of the, uh, the NAS we want to migrate. And here we go. It says we want to migrate the 712 to the 918, and we can go ahead and get going. There are two different ways you can do this. I'm going to do a migration because I want to keep as many of the settings and as existing uh, permissions and all that sort of thing as I can. You could do a reinstallation here if you wanted to, uh, but we're going to go with migration. And we'll click on install now. Now, as it says, this is going to take a little time. It's going to install the disk station manager. Uh, it's claiming it'll be ready in 10 minutes. We'll see about that. Um, we'll use the magic of iMovie to accelerate this, uh, this portion of the video. After Synology finishes the download to the disk station, it goes through a reboot process and then slowly comes back online. So the whole thing did take a little bit over 10 minutes, but that's right about what was expected. Now we can see our status is ready instead of uh, migrate and we can connect into the box. So we'll click connect and then we'll come into the login screen. And I'll go ahead and pop in. And what we see is a pretty standard uh, DSM interface at this point with uh, system health of good and a resource monitor and all sorts of uh, uh, other indicators. So we can go into the main menu, hit the storage manager, and we can see that we're healthy. We've got the ori original volume that carried over from the WD Greens and we've got the unused drives here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new volume with the two WD reds. Go custom here because I wanna make sure that we end up with a RAID 1. And we pick our two drives. Uh, we can see 3.64 terabytes available. These are definitely the two WD reds. And we're okay to blow away the data. And since we're sort of in a hurry, we're not gonna worry about doing a drive check, although it's probably best practices to, uh, to do that. Next, ButterFS, next and apply. So this process will get going in the background and it becomes available relatively quickly, uh, but the Synology will continue to do some activities in the background to bring those disks online. While that's happening, Let's go down and take a look at this SSD cache because as you remember, we put the two SSDs in the bottom of this, uh, of this NAS. So we can go ahead and create one. We'll do a read-write cache just because we can and it's a little more fun. It sees both of these SSDs that are matching NVMe drives. We're gonna mount these to volume two. Click next. And it's an alert that uh, you don't want to use mismatched models, but we're not, so that's quite all right. And it'll 
just to only allow raid one for that, which is fine. And we're going to just let it eat up all the memory, use up all the capacity. That's fine too. Some more warnings and then off we go. All right, so now that's mounting and creating. So we've got the new volume, we've got the SSD cache, which uh, probably won't help us out a whole lot in these initial uh, file movements, but it's there and getting set up. And now what we're gonna do is drive into the folders that we need to migrate and move those over. All right, so now we're going to start to migrate our files. And the easiest way to do that is to just drive into the shared folders and we can see all the typical folders all set to volume one because at the time that's all they knew about but now if we click on brian personal for instance we can go to edit and right here select volume two and when we do that we can do some other things like enable recycle bin and and do other folder settings we're not going to worry about that for right now i'll click ok it's going to tell me it's going to take a while I do happen to know this is a relatively small folder though, and so it should be able to find its available space just fine, and then begin the migration process. So what you see here is we're moving just a little bit more than two and a half gig. It's gonna be quick, take less than a minute, and it's uh, driving through at uh, a pretty decent clip. So we'll watch this one finish. And then we'll move on to some of the larger folders that I will save you the agony of watching that in slow motion or even at 8x speed. And we'll pick up the, uh, the next segment of the video after we've moved all the folders over. We're about three quarters done. I think it's overestimating the 33 minutes there. All right, picks it back up. Finishing shortly, 80% done, 90% done. And one more jump. There we go. All right, now we can see that folder we moved. It's set to volume two and uh, everything's cool there. And we'll just continue on down the, the list until the folders are all moved over that I want to preserve. And then we'll uh, move on with adding the other drives to the RAID array. So you can see the folders that I've wanted to move are now on volume two. They've all scooted over. We left Net Backup behind and Time Machine. Uh, both are legacy folders that aren't really needed any longer or are backed up elsewhere. So now we can go take a look at Storage Manager and see our volumes. Uh, the counters haven't caught up yet. There are a number of other background processes still happening. I went through and re removed some legacy packages that weren't required anymore in the package center. So when we go to remove this volume one, it'll tell us a couple system services in place. I'm not worried about that. And these are the two shared folders that I'm not worried about either. So we can go ahead and remove those. It'll probably tell us that there is a problem and that will be okay. We'll continue. It'll want a password because this is a serious effort. And it'll take a little time while it goes through and removes that volume. And we'll wait for that process to resolve itself and then go ahead and eject the WD greens, swap them for the WD reds, and then carry on with this process. All right. The volume is gone. Look at that. Our SSD cache is there. It's operating normally, which is pretty cool. So let's go ahead and physically make the swap. As expected, the Synology system is disappointed that we've removed the drives. And we've got some danger alerts. What else we have going on? Hey, our Volume 2 is happy. That's cool. Uh, that one, yep, Storage 2 has crashed. 
and we've got our two new drives that are not initialized yet. Uh, but overall, this is exactly what we'd expect. So let's take a look at uh, what we can do to fix these alerts. Unable to use because it's crashed. We'll go ahead and remove that. Enter in the password. Maybe try the right password this time. All right, so we've taken care of that issue. The beeping has stopped. We'll go back, we don't have any, oh, we're healthy again. There's no uh, severe alerts. We've got two used drives, we've got two unused drives. All is looking right in the world. All right, now we're going to look at our pool. And it's not exactly intuitive, but we're going to change RAID type. We're going to step through this by adding one drive at a time. So we'll go to RAID 5 now, and eventually we'll get to RAID 6. I'm just going to pick one drive for this. Because it is a progressive process to get to 6. So I've selected drive 2. He's going to join this RAID 5 group and click Apply. Now this is going to require significant behind the scenes activity within the system and that's fine we've got time uh, but it's going to walk through this process and then after that's complete we'll do the same thing change raid type go to six add the last drive and be off and running really the process to migrate from the old two bay 715 plus to this system has been relatively easy didn't require much active time. Now there is quite a bit of passive time while the system works, but that's okay. So we'll keep uh, working through this process, but that'll uh, conclude the, the body of this video. You know, if you want to help us and help Storage Review keep making videos, what would be great would be if you would share this with a friend or any of our videos, subscribe, thumbs up, do whatever feels right, but uh, we'd appreciate your support as we continue to do these things and uh, uh, and an upvote on the video and uh, a subscribe goes a long way to help us accomplish those goals.